Welcome to the Audit Expert Series. We're going to talk about customization basics today in this presentation. So some terminology and rules when it comes to using audit. A category is the thing that sits on top of all of the other things. Uh, it's the highest level and it is consists of nine audit items each. So one category is made up of nine audit items. Each audit contains three required categories and each audit can contain one optional category called telecommunications. You must have all nine audit items selected in each of the three categories and if you do enable that fourth optional category you also have to have those nine audit items selected in order to be able to print your report and it will tell you the system will tell you if you're not done or if you're close to being done it just won't let you print if you haven't completed that so here's a look at the categories these are the three categories that are included in the audit system infrastructure security managed support and services and telecommunications and you can see in this each of these has nine blocks. Each of these nine blocks must be either red, yellow, or green when you create your audit for it to be printable. So here are your audit items. This is Managed Support and Services, and here's your nine audit items. And each audit item has a name, so you can see up at the top left there is Monitoring. And then it has a summary statement, which you can see is called satisfactory. You can create your own custom summary statements, or you can use our system summary statements. And we have some predefined summary statements in there as well that kind of add a little bit more color and are based on best practices. These are system uh, custom sum system summary statements, which is what you're looking at here, needs improvement, satisfactory, needs immediate attention. Those are in every available in every audit. If you don't know what else to say, just say that. Some of the audit items will have default audit items for server, for example. We have created an audit summary statement, a predefined summary statement that says server is five years old and out of warranty, needs to be replaced. So you can choose that as a canned summary statement or you're able to type your own. So some of the user feedback that we received uh, in the years that we had rolled out audit was that uh, these most requested features, some how do I add my own audit items was probably the number one thing. We provide all the audit items in the system that are there when you start it. So when you become a client of audit, they're all there for you. There's more than nine audit items in each of those categories. You will then decide which audit items you want in that category. You have to have that minimum of nine. It's also the maximum. So you can have nine, but you can't have less than nine. You can't have more, can't have less. But you now can add your own audit items with the release of our newest version. We've allowed you to add your own audit items, call them whatever you want, and you can add them to any category. How do I create my own category was a number one, really a number one uh, re requested feature. So the new rules inside the system that you're going to see when you get involved now is that you can now create your own audit items and add to any category. In fact, you can add one audit item audit item to multiple categories if you'd like. You can now create your own category and as of this recording to replace the optional telecommunications category with. So we're allowing you to turn that fourth category, that optional category into anything you'd like. And customization, if you join audit, it's an optional upgrade. So you don't need that. If you're happy with what you see in audit, if you're happy with kind of what we've created for you, you can use it without customization and save a little bit of money. And all trial members do have customization activated. So when you sign up for your trial, you will have customization activated. The reason we did that is we want you to try it out. We want you to, to see what it's like and then make the decision whether you want to keep it or not. So after your tr as your trial is going to expire, you need to decide if you want to keep that or downgrade it. If you do, you just click the downgrade, let us know, and we will take that off so you don't get charged for it. So let's talk about how to do this, right? Here's the category view. You can see right there, that's on the menu where you'll click into categories and you can see you have uh, the new custom category button. So this will be defaulted when you're trying it or if you own the, category, the custom customization add-on. And you can see here that we have the custom categories on the bottom. 
So you've got the four in the middle, infrastructure, security, managed support, and services, and telecom. Those are the system categories that we've created for you, and the custom categories are the ones you're going to create for yourself. So those will be empty when you first get in there. Once you click that new category, this is what you're going to see. You'll have the ability to add a, dis a title, the name of your category, and the description. So the first area is your title, second area is your description. And then hit the Save button, and you're good to go. Now I created a little custom category here called Master MSP Services. And I added a description, which you, you need to add for that so that it shows up on the right-hand side of your printed audit. And you can see here I just created a bunch of audit items and added it to my category. Let's talk about how to assign items to your category. So this is our custom category again, and we're going to go find what we want and edit it. And you can see you can toggle them on and off at any point in time so that they don't show up. So you can create as many as you want. And, you know, if you want to create some to experiment with, just turn them off so you don't see them in your pick lists. And to edit, you just click on that pencil icon. Now I'm edit I'm in inside of the category right now. And you can see we've got a selection box where we can assign audit items to this category. So it will drop down all of the audit items that I can select. And then I hit assign audit item to add it. And you can see at the bottom, it shows up. Now you can edit it there. You can toggle it on and off there. And you can delete it only if you have, uh, the, the delete button won't be available if you have added things to the audit, to an audit. So if you have, if you have in with audit items and categories, if you have an audit that you've done that has an item in there already, it's not going to let you delete things. It will let you turn it on and off so it doesn't appear in the future, but we want to keep the past intact. So you can't delete just about any, you can't, you can't delete things that have been in use. So let's talk about audit items. Now here's your selector on the menu item, on menu bar to get into audit items and simply add an audit item, type in the name of the audit item that you'd like, type in the name that you want and click add. Once you do that, it'll show up on the list and you just go and edit it. You can toggle it on and off again as well. And some the, you're gonna wanna make use of the filtering. If you look at the left there, you'll see filter by all, that's the standard view. You wanna hit custom to kind of narrow it down so it's easy to get through, or just use the search box there to type in what you just created and then click on edit and you'll be inside of your audit item and now you can build it out. You have the edit button, you can edit your title at any time, you can add the description here, and then summary statements will blow up the default and predefined summary statements. It'll show you th those in there, but you can then add custom summary statements for that audit item right at the audit item level. You can also add custom summary statements inside of any audit that you do. Uh, infographics here, you can see which infographic is associated with this, which ones we've associated with. If, if you're looking at a system audit item, it'll show you what we've associated with that. You can upload your own. So in your custom audit items, you're not going to have an infographic in there. You would have to upload one if you've created one. So you're welcome to do that if you'd like. Then you can select a category and add it to that category. And you can see here, I've got two categories that this one audit item is associated with. And what you're going to find is that I've showed you two ways to do the same thing. You can add audit items from within a category, or you can add the category to the audit items from the audit item entry. So adding your category to an audit. Right now, again, the only one you can edit is telecommunications. You'll see that you can view and edit category, or you can change and disable. So used to be, you could only disable it. Now you can click that change button right there, and that's going to allow you to go in and drop down. You'll have a drop down there and pick your new category, right, right there, and then hit the save button. And now you've got an empty category. So now you're gonna have to go into the view and edit category, and you're going to drag over the audit items that you've assigned. And this is what it looks like. This is going to be very much the same in any category that you have. All of your audit items will appear on the left. You simply click, mouse click, drag them over, and then you can arrange them any way you'd like. Thanks for watching the customization 
audit expert series video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please contact us through the chat feature, send us a support ticket, email any of us. We're here for you and uh, look for more videos just like this.